welcome. This is Student to Stud. Now before jumping into this first lecture, I thought I would spend a moment on giving you the purpose and goals of this series. I'm currently an ortho intern and the audition trail is still fresh in my mind. Whether you're just talking about going into ortho, planning your rotations, or about to start your ortho rotations, this series is going to give you everything you need to stand out. So after the completion of our rotations and interviews, me and my old roommate thought it would have been incredibly helpful to have something that at least showed us some sort of roadmap to try and figure all this out. And that's how Student Stutters created. This is going to be a series where we take you through material we were pimped on, everything we found to be high yield, seen on almost every rotation, and the tips and tricks that allow us to be successful in securing our residency positions. This is going to be a lecture series that takes all the materials you'll be studying and put into one place. We will supp supplement each lecture with incredibly high yield pictures, x-rays, and videos to ensure you go from classroom student to an orthopedic stud. So without further ado, let us get into this first lecture, a roadmap for the orthopedic rotation trail. So you've taken the first step and decided you want to go into orthopedics. Now it's time to commit. You have to set up rotations and you don't know where to begin. You have a thousand questions rolling through your mind. Don't worry, we were all there and got through it. But luckily for you, you have us. So let us tackle these questions. Okay, applications and rotations. First, like all things, is starting the process. So let us see what that entails. Starting the process. Ideally, you want to actually start this process during your third year. And let me tell you why. There's going to be many moving parts that need to happen before be the beginning of the new year, January 1st. First, you need to set up your fourth year schedule. You want this done out of the way because you want to be able to make the order of your locations of your rotations without having to worry about whether your school is going to approve the rotation or not based on the order of your rotations. For my school, we were not allowed to have back-to-back -back elective rotations and I had an emergency medicine rotation I could not move. So I knew I only had five time slots and so I was going to take some finagling to line them up correctly. And I knew if I wanted my top five positions, I was going to have to start early. And in addition to this, some rotation sites may be off schedule from your schools, so you may have to start and end on different dates, which is forces you to have a specific setup if you really want to go to that location. So getting this set up early is vital. The schedule itself may look something like this, because this was my schedule for my auditions. I would highly suggest taking the first month in June, if you're able to, to study for level two and or step two, and really all you need is four weeks to study for that, and then that is out of the way. If you can't take whole study month, try and take it as soon as you can because you want to get ortho on the brain as soon as you can. Next, audition season generally runs from July to December. So get your first one in early, and ideally that'll be in July. And as you start to plan out your rotations, you want to get at least four rotations in. You want all the places you've rotated at to offer you an interview because the likelihood of you matching at a place you did an audition plus interviewing at will increase your chances quite a bit. I had friends that did four to six rotations, and the one that went six all the way through were quite burnt out by the end, but there was also six possible interviews they had, so it's really up to you on how many you want. The more the better, obviously. So you have your schedule set up the way you like. Now you need to start doing some research on programs. I started with my top five programs, and then gathered information for my second five as backups for fill-ins for my schedule. All residency program information, whether osteopathic or allopathic, can be found on the main ACGME website, and it has everything you need for reaching out to programs as well as viewing accreditation status. But let me tell you, the most important person to contact is the medical education director because they are the ones that deal with med students directly and have the most information about their respective programs. When I was setting up my schedule, I wanted to say very organized, so I made a Word document of all the information for every program. This is why starting in third year is crucial because programs started accepting applications very early. For example, some programs started last year very early in January and they required a lot from their application, so to secure the data I wanted for them, I knew I had to finish it early, and I'm glad I did because I was able to get everything in by the end of January and secure my first requested time slot. As you can see, just starting the process is very time intensive, so getting the ball rolling early will pay dividends later on. All right, let's go back and move on to the next portion. You have your schedule dialed in to get as many rotations as your schedule will allow, and you have your top program's information. But now you're going out to start to ask yourself how you should line these rotations up. So let me give you my two cents on the matter. So the lineup. This is a crucial question you should ask yourself because you're going to be spending not only weeks at this program, but potentially five years. So where to do your rotation is completely individual based. 
For me, I wanted to stay in Columbus, Ohio because this is where my wife has a job and both of our families are. So I knew I wanted to be in a program in Ohio or at least the surrounding states. So if you're in a relationship, talk to your significant other and get their opinion on the matter because they are on this journey with you. Another important question to ask yourself is the area itself. Do you want more rural, city-based, something in between? And just another example to ask is what you have or heard about different programs. I would suggest asking students in the class above you for more information as well as going on sites like Student Doctor Network or even Reddit to find answers. Trust me, we were all asking this question and it was very difficult to get a good answer before audition started and people started talking to each other about pros and cons, so feel free to ask. Next is how many rotations you should apply to and aim to do. So I would get at least a list of top five programs you'd want to be at, then get a second five and if you want, even a third five and apply to them all in anticipation of filling all of your available time slots in your schedule. Ideally, you'll get at least four auditions or sub i rotation because the more the better. While you are filling out applications, you will see that most ask for specific dates with your first, second, and third choice of time slots. So this is forcing you to choose your order of rotations. This is a very difficult question to answer. For me, I did not plan great. Let's just say I planned to have a wedding two years before even thinking about scheduling your rotations, and I literally got married the first week of my first rotations, so I would suggest not doing that. But this is my anecdotal advice on the matter. Say you already know your number one program. Let's say doctors, like mine was. Well, where do you put it? If you're number one choice first, you have got to be prepared. There are no ifs, ands, or buts on the matter. You have to, at the very least, know the top five high yields on orthopods for trauma, basic sciences, and orthopedic principles. Luckily for you, that is where we come in. But you can't go into a rotation not knowing classifications and treatments of a femoral neck fracture. So I suggest putting your number one within your first four rotations, with being no later than October. That way, you are within the first couple rounds of auditioners, you've had a chance to get some ortho knowledge under your belt, and you have the best opportunity to stand out. If it ends up your first, and you really know your stuff, you will really stand out because they know it may be your first ever rotation and your first rotation is really more about teaching experience than you standing out. So you have your lineup, let's see how you actually apply. Now you've set up your schedule, you have the medical education information and you know generally how you want your schedule to look, you're on the right track. Now let's figure out how to actually apply to these programs. Okay, so you have your contact list and now it's time to start reaching out to programs. The important information that you need to obtain is, do they use VSAS or do they have their own application? If they have their own application, how can you access it? Because some places have a website with everything and others send you a document to fill out. And it's also very important to ask if they have a specific date they end their rotations because interviews start end of October, beginning of November. And so many programs start taking applications by that point. So again, very important you have your schedule set and ready to be filled. Once you've reached out, they will tell you all their requirements, and some have more than others. Some it's a single page with basic information, while others require a laundry list of requirements to be prepared. Lastly is staying organized throughout this process. I would suggest creating a folder that contains application-specific documents. I had my professional picture, immunization records, personal statement, and PDFs of my boards all in this one folder, and then once the applications started piling up, they were all in one place. Time becomes very valuable while you're filling these out. So now that we've got the how, let's go back and move on to the next piece. Now that you have all that under your belt and are fully ready to apply, now comes the waiting game. So what should you do in this time? Well, let's see how you should prepare. So, how to prepare for rotations. I'm gonna hit this point again. If you know you want to go into ortho early on and you have the opportunity, I'd highly suggest getting one or two orthopedic rotations in during your third year. I personally had three ortho rotations during my third year, but they were all very different. My first was at a hospital where they didn't teach me a single thing and all I did was stand around. My second rotation, I was closing every case, being asked high yield pimp questions and exposed to a lot of different operations. And my third and final was a spine specific ortho rotation where the attending expected me to have a resident based level of knowledge and responsibility. All these rotations were vital to my performances during my auditions. But again, ask water mess students from your school where they did rotations and their experiences at each so you can have the best experience possible. On top of getting great experiences, these all gave me the opportunity to acquire great letters of recommendation. 
And some programs even allow you to rotate with the residents during third year. So I would email programs asking them if they take third years, especially if you're very interested in that program. Next is the materials that you're going to need. So your must-haves, you need netters, orthobolts, handbook, and pocket pen. Netters contains great high yield information on anatomy that you are definitely going to be asked about. Orthobolts is a gold standard that all the residents study from. Handbook of Fractures, which is almost more of a reference manual, but it does contain great information. Lastly is Pocket Pen. This is an amazing resource that tests and solidifies your knowledge on the material you just studied, and it literally has any question you may be asked on rotations. I suggest starting with netters and reading about the anatomy of a certain part of the body. Take the upper limb. You really know everything you can about that section, and then jump into orthobullet and look over the trauma section, and finish off with some questions from Pocket Pen. Now these advanced materials will be useful later on when you are very comfortable with a large majority of the high yield ortho knowledge and you want to supplement your ortho bolts reading. Netters is a great study material that has a lot of information that residents use to study for their OIDEs and the surgical exposures provides beautiful artistic renditions of common surgical approaches and gives you great anatomy and detailing step-by-step -step information on each exposure. And then of course this lecture series which will give all of this high yield information and more in one great place. Now let's finish up and get you on the road filling out those apps. I don't think it needs to be said, but you truly need to take these applications and make it a commitment. It is going to take a lot of time and effort to fill these out, getting your schedule in order, and make sure you have everything lined up the way you want. So once you start an application, I was just working through it till the end. And also working on your personal statement because you can even use the same one you use in applications to use on the ERAS application. So it's just one less thing you have to worry about later on. All right, let's keep moving here. So you've applied and you've done all this. Now what do you do? Well, I would suggest defining what a program is to you. This is where it comes down to your values in a program. It's difficult without having rotated how well you'll click with residents. So that's why you have to formulate questions before starting your rotation. Without having done a rotation yet, ask yourself these questions. One, is it an area that I will want to live in? And if you have a spouse or partner, you must bring them into this question because they are on the journey with you as well. Do you want rural versus urban? Do you want close to family? Two, does it have the type of training you want? Do you want more of an academic setting? Is research important to you? Do you think you want to do a fellowship? Three, what is the schedule like for training? How many rotations are at the hospital and how many are away? Many programs have to do P's for three to six months in an entirely different city. So that's why it's important to do your research. Next, collaborate. This is where you ask the people in your life what is important to them. Do you have a spouse or partner that's going to be taking this journey with you? Are there family members you want to stay close to? Don't be afraid to ask other classmates, like we will go over later. These are sometimes your greatest asset when starting on the trail. Get their opinions and input on programs they are choosing. From one program to another, I would also suggest getting online. Unfortunately, you won't know how the residents interact with each other until you're on the rotation itself. There are some posts on Student Doctor Network, but like the rest of this process, it's pretty veiled in shadows when trying to read about programs. It's a lot of word of mouth, so reach out to fellow classmates and feel free to reach out to us to ask questions. Most people are open books on the matter. Last but not least is refining what these residencies mean to you. Yes, you're going to have to reject rotations. At this point, you're probably just hoping to get one rotation, but soon enough, you're going to have to narrow down your list, and I would suggest having your top programs already figured out. Programs are going to answer back earlier than others, and my advice, confirm rotations with programs as they come because nothing in this field is promised, so get what you can early. But once you start getting your top choices back, then that is when you can tell, no matter how unfortunate, other programs that you were honored to be selected as an applicant to do a rotation at their site, but unfortunately you are not going to be able to rotate with them. In the end, you have to fill out as many time slots as you can. So accept a lot early and cut down as you start getting back your top choices in. All right, let's finish this thing up. So coming to you soon. Just a short preview of what our series is going to have to offer. I hope you found it helpful and took something away from this for applying to rotations. Below, I'll put it contact information in the comments so you can feel free to ask us anything about uh, what you learned here and what you have for more questions on uh, ortho rotations. So what can you expect in the future? Well, like I said, everything we gathered and took away from our rotations as well as information from the top sort resources all consolidated into a high yield lecture series. 
It's going to be coming to you soon, so be prepared.